This is Toledo Symphony Lab, a behind-the-scenes look at the world of classical music from WGTE Public Media and your Toledo Symphony. I'm Brad Cresswell. Joining me in the studio today are the Toledo Symphony's president and CEO, Zach Vassar, also the TSO's marketing director, Felicia Canny, and we have a couple of guests joining us by phone. That is Principal Second Violin and Artistic Administrator, Merwin Sue, also our intrepid music director, Elaine Trudell, Uh, Both joining us from home, Merwin here in the Toledo area and Elaine up in Canada and Montreal. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Of course, we are continuing our social distancing practices. Uh, Felicia and Zach and I are forming this six-foot triangle. Equilateral. Yeah, equilateral. I I knew that there was a word for it, (laughs) right? But remember, I'm the person that was taught long division by a 10-year-old. If you go into Zern, you'll find out everything you need to know about equilateral triangles. Right. (laughs) Learn along with your children. Uh, that was an episode from a couple of weeks ago. But today we're taking on, again, another facet of uh, how musicians are coping um, with coronavirus and with the restrictions that have been put in place on traveling and on interaction and all of that sort of thing. So it, it's it's a great big whole new world that we're all coping with right now. So we want to speak to that uh, personally and how it's affecting us and and how we're getting through, how we're coping with all of this. And I know, Zach, you've said, you know, music, obviously, is a big part of that. Do you want to start out sure. and with your ideas? Well, you know, I think a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about how you know the arts organizations can help, um, frankly, a, a scared and shocked public to survive this. You know, we can all find ways to use the arts to... Um, you know, give us respite from the headlines to uh, to reassure us that there is you know greater humanity beyond all of the challenges that we're that we're facing, and uh, and I think it's interesting to to just see if you look at social media what's been going on. I was uh, really surprised uh, at my reaction, Brad, to one of the things that you f- you posted on on Facebook. You had a um, uh, a post, I think, from the Rotterdam Phil- Philharmonic. No. And the musicians of the Rotterdam uh, came together to record the um, uh, the Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Ninth, and it was basically more or less uh, one instrument to a part. But you know, they all had uh, earbuds and were were recording uh, yeah. to a click track, each at home, at yeah. home. And then somebody mixed it together to be the Ninth Symphony. And um, you know, I remember very clearly where I was when I I watched that. I was standing in my kitchen. Um, and you know, I, I I started watching. It was about five minutes long, and you're you're interested in the novelty of it. You're asking questions as to how they put this together, and then the choir comes in, and my eyes just filled up with tears immediately. And it was one of those biological reactions yeah. or responses that I didn't see coming. Yeah, and um, and I I wondered why I was so moved. And you think about Beethoven Nine. You think about that piece. It's always been used as kind of a celebration of the end of something, the fall of the wall, the end of the war, um, major anniversaries. But here it took on this sort of just a reminder about brotherhood and humanity, which the the Schiller text is all about. And um, I, I, I think that's where my tears were coming from, is that in the age of coronavirus, it, it took a little bit of Beethoven to just knock me off my feet and, uh, and really reassure me in a, a different way. Yeah, a, a message about joy and brotherhood on the face of it, the, the yeah. Schiller poem, but also uh, becoming a message of hope, really, right. uh, now, nowadays, given the current situation. Well, how has music been uh, a part of your life, Felicia, as we've been under quarantine, as it were? Well, I find that I have a lot more time at home, <laughs> um, and and a lot a lot of time with uh, my kids, which is great because sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, in the past during the work week, I I don't get to see them every single day, but uh, it's it's been really great to watch them like just blossom before my eyes, even the, over the last couple of weeks and playing music. And um, we're also adjusting to just a new home life because we have everyone at home right now, my husband, my two kids, cats. And uh, it's like, we we don't know how to operate during the day with one another. With uh, So um, with my one-year-old, she cries a lot right now and she throws her snacks. And the surprising thing that calms her down is... Uh, 
the St. John Passion. So we play it really? when we need to. And then she stops, drops her goldfish crackers, and then goes like, yeah, and then listens to it. Have That's you amazing. tried the St. Matthew Passion? That's pretty good, too. That'll be next. Once this one wears off, <laughs> right. I will try the next. And then so, you can do the B minor mass and just work yeah. through. I'll just work my way through everything. <laughs> that's remarkable. But that's how we're adjusting to a new norm, and music is our solution <laughs> to yeah. a lot so, of Felicia, problems. can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. Was that the first thing that you tried? No, and I can't even claim that I tried this. My husband did while I was sitting on the couch. <laughs> I love this idea that Chris scratches his head and says, you know what might do it? St. John Passion. Let's yeah. go try that. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> you you That's were great. not sitting on the couch or laying on the couch. You were social distancing. That's yes, right. yes. That sounds more active. Yeah. <laughs> I, if, I, if I may jump back in here for a sec, though, um, just thinking about listening to music, uh, I, I'll throw a huge compliment to WGTE. Uh, I've had the fortune of listening to WGTE almost all day in the house. And you know, it's something I don't typically do because I'm at the office and I have meetings and telephone calls. It's been amazing to hear this great radio station just kind of spoon feed these beautiful curated uh, courses of, of of meals of music, and uh, I just I I really am reminded as to how fortunate we are to have this great radio station here uh, playing beautiful music for us. Mm-hmm. Yay! Again, I have to reach six feet to get to my soundboard, so there's a little bit of a delay every time I want some noise to happen. But, uh, yeah, we'll definitely take the compliment. I mean, as far as, you know, the music in my life goes right now, a lot of it has to do with picking the music that I think people want to hear, uh, mm-hmm. you know, at this time. And, and that is an ongoing thing. And we're also dealing with, uh, you know, figuring out, getting people working at home, uh, making sure that we follow specific rules as a media organization. We can stay open mm-hmm. during during this time of sequestering here in Ohio. But we also have to provide the opportunity for those who want to work from home who are able to do that as well in the interest of public health. So there's a lot of stuff on my plate as far as figuring all of that out and hopefully providing some content that gives people a little bit of respite, you know, during this this stressful time. Has this time changed how you curate your playlist? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Mo- mostly in the sense of like, oh, you know, I better not play that right of spring right now. It might be a little too agitating sounding mm-hmm. or, you know, you could try to gravitate more towards pastoral repertoire. Right? Interesting. Elaine, tell us what's going on up there in Canada. Give us a sense of, of how it is for you right now. Uh, well, the, um, our government has been very, very proactive for a little while. And uh, so we're really stuck in our houses and uh what I'm doing these days is I'm trying to um, to be useful. <laughs> it's difficult when you're home, right? And you're home alone. It's uh, it's uh, something I don't really know that much because I uh, move around a lot, like, like everybody. You know, where it's a different reality. But um, I've been doing a few, uh, I've been thinking about what people post on the internet and looking at that and I'm thinking a lot that um, it's really wonderful to see all these, these events, all these moments that people put together that we can watch. And I was thinking, what about if I could post something that we can do together? Because that's the, that's what we're missing the most is the human contact. Of course, through the internet, you can't like touch somebody, you know, you can't give a hug or something like that, but you can maybe play some duets. So I've been posting some duets on our websites with the symphony. Uh, and the easier way to make duets is uh, to play canon. So I start and then people can follow. And actually, Felicia's husband uh, has been transcribing the duet for all the possible instruments, from saxophone to percussion mallet to string instrument to, uh, you know, uh, pretty much any instrument can join in. And something you can do from home and something you feel that, uh, oh, I'm alone, but I'm not alone, you know. So that that's fun to do. I'm also trying to put together... Uh, an audiovisual uh, season of the, the the orchestra from what we've done in the past, a recent past, and a little bit before in our HD series, to uh, try to have something that our you know the people can can do can watch also because you know it feels it's very easy to feel isolated, and even though it's uh, you know you're not next to to the people when you talk to them through the internet or through uh, the TV as uh, as we've done. And as you guys have done, uh, given us some time very 
generously on the WGT is, is that we can have a connection. And I think the big thing we're working on is connection. How can we connect? And thank God that we have, uh, that we have the means and, and media now that we can connect because a time like this would be even more difficult. Of course, uh, you know, I encourage people to read, to listen to music, but there are, it's good to do activities that you're not alone. You know, when Zach said that uh, he was so touched by Beethoven, as I always say, Beethoven makes you feel that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So I think as an artist, my little mission I'm trying to carry now is to find ways and opportunities for people not to feel alone. Um, you know, general public, but also maybe some musicians and younger musicians and kids. So they, you know, it's good, it's good for them to, to, to hang out with us a little bit. And I think it's part of our, our mission and our society to bring people together and to uh, try not to make them feel alone. It's, you know, it's uh, just try to be useful in society. We, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about how it's kind of ironic that during this time of sequestering where everybody has to stay a certain amount of, of space away from each other and, and maybe even away from anybody, um, we're still finding ways through technology to, to bring ourselves closer together. And music is a big part of that, I think, for a lot of people. Merwin, we we haven't heard from you. Uh, tell us a little bit about, like, how are you keeping up with your instrument? Are you practicing at home? I mean, you've got the whole family there. What, what's that situation like for you? Well, it's been really interesting because I've been able to really connect with my students through kind of online teaching. That's been something that, you know, it's very you know, it's a very quick learning curve, and I am so impressed by all of the educators out there who have pivoted so quickly towards distance learning and online teaching because it's really a different, it's a different sense of teaching and a different sense of engagement. So, you know, I know that we've been talking about that on this radio show, so I won't, you know, talk too much about it, but it's definitely, you know, been very interesting for me to try to evolve my teaching style and to kind of know what has to happen before the lesson, the preparation that needs to happen with my students so that the hour that we spend together is really very intense and very productive as opposed to kind of fiddling with the technology and that kind of thing. So that's been a large part of it is trying to find ways to make sure that my students feel like they're still making progress. And then for me, for my solo practicing, I've been focusing on the fact that it's National Women's Month. And there's been some works that I've been wanting to learn, um, works by Augusta Reed Thomas, by Sholamit Ron, Chen Yi, um, great female composers who I haven't had the chance, haven't had the kind of the time to learn. And, you know, it's, I mean, one of the great things about being a part of an orchestra is that you're learning so much music and so much music is coming at you when you don't have that opportunity you can kind of go into your own archives and say, oh, this is a piece I've been meaning to learn that I've been wanting to do. And so it's a combination of learning some Beethoven string quartets, because that's coming up in August, and learning these works by these great female composers. So that's what I've been focusing on. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, interesting, again, how new doors are being opened for so many people by uh, the events that are going on right now. What, what are you listening to at home, Zach? What, what's your go-to for something like this? I mean, aside from Beethoven, and let's take Mahler out of the picture. Well, I, I, I have to confess that, um, so the Berlin Philharmonic has made the Digital Concert Hall open to all. Um, I used to have a subscription to this, and I let that lapse uh, when my daughter was born. I just didn't have enough time to really get into it. Um, so I've pivoted back, uh, found a little bit of time at the end of the day to explore the Digital Concert Hall and um, I, I've gone pretty deep into Bernard Hytink's uh, recordings with them from the 90s, including the music of Mahler. And uh, yeah, so that's my that's my nerdy response to that question. But um, thinking to your comments about the type of music you're programming, I feel like in our house uh, we've been trying really to keep um, you know beautiful and quiet music on in the background, just to maintain a nice atmosphere. So in the morning it's a uh, it's a lot of you know solo guitar music or you know quiet string music. Um, you know, it's wait. I thought you had my radio station on at home. 
Well, I'm talking about the time when you know the news is normally on. Okay, yes. okay, just to uh, clarify. Then, of course, as soon as nine nine oh five comes on, we switch over to Haley's show, and then we uh, listen to your show, of course, in the afternoon, and of course, then we compare it to how great Haley's show was. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> It's a family discussion, isn't it? <laughs> right, I got to the soundboard <laughs> faster that time. You notice? I did. Uh, but no, it's it, it it is interesting just how even in our in our downtime we we try to listen to that kind of contemplative music that that uh, you were describing earlier. Yeah. Well, that's a really good idea because I think um, kids can sense when when people are agitated or frustrated, um, and we underestimate that sometimes. And um, I'm I'm glad that Zach mentioned playing music, and we do have music on at our house um, as much as possible as well. And I'm finding that um, I sing a lot more than normal too, really? which is really um, not what I usually do. What I like to do because I feel very self conscious about singing. Can you give us a sample? <laughs> no. <laughs> Or tell us what you like to sing. Oh well, I think my my daughter had my kindergartner has um, some music assignments, so we resurrected uh, each of us is a flower. This elementary music song, and she's learning this other song that is uh, about going to first grade um, to the melody of New York, New York by Frank Sinatra. Wow! So that has been hilarious. I was thinking more like the wheels on the bus, you know, or something. No, like no, that, we're past that right now. Yeah, you're going end past of kindergarten. That. <laughs> But something that people can do when um, they're at home, and we recognize that a lot of people are moving their offices to like a work at home arrangement. Um, we've been curating these Spotify work from home playlists that you can uh, access. Uh, uh, we'll we'll come up with new ones and put it out there on social media, so you can just click on it and, and get the music. Um, but we thought that that was just kind of a nice thing to to share with everybody as yeah. they're adjusting to a new normal. Um, I, I know we're doing it a little differently and we're kind of slap dashing some of these episodes together because we're forced to, to be separated. You know, a land you're up in Canada or when you're home, you're under a quarantine and the three of us here in the studio are, are, you know, one Brad and a few inches length <laughs> away from each other. As, as that's how we measure things this now like body length yeah. no I, I i think i look at somebody and i'm like could i lay down on the floor between the two of us if i can then we're good oh are right? you how tall are you i'm six three oh, so i figure okay. that's you so know that's a good measure yeah so if anybody's closer than what i can lay down between us then then that's too close <laughs> Are you guys but, two Felicias away from each other? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Oompa. Yeah. Oompa. Hey. Hey. I know. Why is that the song that comes up? We gotta up? pay for rights for that music now. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. Edit that. So we, we do have a little bit of time left, and I thought it would be fun to sort of go into the archives and dig out a couple of quizzes that, that never actually made it to air that we've never done before. Quiz, quizzes that I wrote, but we never had time to use. J just to be clear, Felicia does not know the topics of these quizzes, correct? Nobody knows. I okay, don't. good. Okay, so she she is now you know not able to study ahead and know all the answers. Yeah, no, I never know all. The <laughs> but Merwin's going to win in anyway. Position. We know this. I mean, that's that, totally not true. <laughs> okay, so you have a choice. There are two different quizzes here. One of them is musical patriarchs, and the other one is Haydn symphony nicknames. I think we should we should do musical patriarchs in non National Women's Month. I will do musical patriarchs for eight hundred, please. Okay. Are you in agreement, Felicia and Elaine? I like I like the Hyde and Symphonies one better, but that's up to you guys. Well, Elaine, you decide because you're the both? furthest away. Well, if Merwin picked the Hyde, then let's pick the other one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to finish out the whole uh, podcast talking about which quiz we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so Brad's going to choose the quiz. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Symphonies. musical patriot. Let me ask you a couple of musical patriarch quiz questions, and then we'll see how we go with that. I'm bringing a little music here. This is my pop quiz music. Okay. And, and I'm not giving you a choice. I'm giving you three different clues, right? And then you just have to pick the the name of the patriarch out of the out of Th thin that, air. That is a choice, right? Yeah. Oh, three clues. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. So, born in Vienna, this patriarch was an orphan and also an apprentice to a bookbinder. His band played at the coronation of Queen Victoria. Despite banning his children from entering music, all three of them became musicians. One of them. 
the Strauss Senior, right? Is that what you said? Yep, that's what I said. Yay! Johann Strauss the first, one of his sons, known as the Waltz King. That would be Johann Strauss the second. Okay. Number two. This famous father was a talented player of the clarinet, the viola, and the guitar, but he was most famous for his virtuosity on a different instrument. He wrote one concerto for his instrument, which is still played today. His famous son wrote two. Actually, he wrote two concertos, I think, but the, the one is, is well-known. His son wrote two very well-known concertos for his instrument, and oh. he played in the premieres of at least four operas by Richard Wagner. Whoa. Even though he hated Wagner's music. So what Did musical Strauss fun? more than two? Strauss. <laughs> yeah, Franz Strauss. Another Franz Strauss. Strauss. Wow, okay. Wow. Yeah, famous French horn player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. I mean, he wrote the one horn concerto. I was thinking he wrote a second one that, like, he didn't he, like or wrote, something. Yeah, he, he wrote some music for horn and piano that, that played a lot, actually. Okay. Uh, cool. but, but it's not, you know, not like his son. That's, I think his son is a bit more famous. Just I'm gonna, touch, I'm gonna yeah. bring our quiz music down. There we go. Okay, <laughs> so here's another one. It's a little difficult with all the phones to be able to hear what's going on. Okay, here's the next one. Um, this father was born into a family of tradesmen. His father was a bookbinder. Another bookbinder. This person was kicked out of law school because he skipped class too often. And he was also a talented violinist and composer. He wrote a treatise on violin playing that became widely known and used throughout Europe. Somebody who flourished in the 18th century, I should mention. Leopold Mozart? Leopold Mozart, you got it. Yay! Good yeah. job, Merwin. All right, they're going to get Is a little bit harder. Is book binding really, really popular then? I feel like... Well, you know, people had to have books and books had to have is. binds. Or bindings, yeah. <laughs> Books had to have binds. That's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm not going to get any of these. I'm really in a Books bind. Books had to be bound. <laughs> exactly. Can we switch to the other quiz? All right. <laughs> Too late. I'll just give you. I'll just give you uh, one more question. Okay. This musical father started as a choir boy at age five, but his voice his voice was so beautiful that his choir master recommended that he be made into a castrato. This is the oh. perfect pivot to the other quiz. But his father declined. <laughs> It's Haydn. Joseph Haydn. So we give it to the other question. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, wow. I wanted to get that. He would, when he worked for the <laughs> Esterhazy family, as we know, he worked for the Prince Esterhazy and, and the royal family there for 30 years, right? He was the third highest paid employee in the Esterhazy court, right behind the property manager and the doctor. Where did the mm. bookbinder fit in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that they had their own bookbinder or not. Well, I mean, they had books. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to have to wrap it up here because we're, we're just about out of time. Does anybody want to say uh, anything in closing, uh, getting back to this idea of, of how we're dealing with, you know, this completely changed reality for everybody being sequestered at home or at least, you know, social distancing? And how music plays a role in, in getting us through. Elaine, do you want to say something about yeah. it? Yeah, I'd like to say something, but I, it doesn't really have to do with music. It's um, just since, you know, we have a platform here that um, the, the more we do now, the less we have to do later uh, in this social distancing. I, I think if we can go a step further and just stay home, just you know, we're going to try on our side, our different artists that, oh, everywhere, to make, you know, to, to bring some entertainment to you. But stay home. Don't, don't, don't you know, cheat a little bit, saying, oh, I'm kind of okay because I know this person. Uh, it's, um, you, you want to be, there, there's a difference between just being uh, thorough and careful and just um, being panicked, right? The more you do, it's like when you, we, <laughs> it's like when we prepare a concert. The more prepared we are, the less nervous we are, the less panicked we are. Now, if we do more, if we're very thorough about just staying home, you know, even just that, like, like, the, like some scientists say that act as if you have it and then, and, and then it will go faster. We just have to bring down that curve. And that's very important. You know, we see things on TV sometimes, you know, like things going down in Florida and like people just don't caring. 
you, you, you might not feel it, but you might give it to somebody else. So it's really important to stay home. And we're going to, I personally am going to do my very best to try to put things together and put them on the internet. And all my colleagues will do the same. So, so that people, you know, if it gives you another option, you know, music is not the only thing, but it's something that brings us together. And it's something that you can pay attention to or not pay attention to, but just leave it there in the back. It, it will just help you go through your day. And uh, it doesn't have to be the, the deepest thing you will do in your life, but it just, it's going to accompany you. So just let it accompany you and stay home. Wash your hands like many, many times a day. Wash your face and stay home. I love that you have as your um, your your tagline on your um, your videos on Facebook. You say, spread the music, don't spread the virus. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And, you know, you have to, it's, this, this will pass. This too will pass, as they say. It will pass, you know. We just have to be diligent. And it will completely pass and we'll be fine. We just have to be diligent and not, especially when it starts to get better. Like in two, three weeks, when the curve we see where life at a plateau and comes down, that's the time to, uh, it's like we say here in, in the north, <laughs> we say in April, uh, don't take one thread off, you know, like because you're going to catch a cold. Well, let's keep acting as if, you know, if we're in the peak of it when it gets better. If we can remember that and just, you know, we're we're gonna get through this very uh, no problem. And I do think it it will get better, and we will get to the other side of this. And oh yeah, maybe you know a year from now or many years from now, we'll look back on this moment and realize maybe that the world needed to be unified, all everyone on Earth, you know, against this virus that is going around the world, and um. Because I'm, I'm seeing more unity than ever before, mm-hmm. not against, you know, people, or a person against another person, but um, kind of the human race against this virus. And that's inspiring to me in a way. And I think the glue that kind of holds us together, at least from what I've observed in my life and from my friends on social media, is is truly music. And I'm not just speaking as a representative of this organization. I really do believe that... Um, uh, you know, we're, we're being brought together and um, held together by music. Yeah, and, and that's been a function of music for centuries. It's just that it's becoming more immediate now for many folks who don't think about it mm-hmm. uh, so much. It's becoming a big part of people's lives. And we really look forward to the time when we can all get together and make music together again in person. Well, I want to thank uh, Merwin Sue and Elaine Trudell for joining us by phone. Elaine up in Montreal, Merwin uh, not too far away. Uh, are you still on your back porch, Merwin, or have you migrated somewhere else? I migrated inside where the land Okay. Yeah. Well, last time we spoke, you were sitting on the back porch for a while. Yeah. But uh, we're glad to have the both of you joining us here on Toledo awesome. Symphony Lab. I also want to thank Zach Vasser and Felicia Canny for joining me here in the studio. Six feet of separation between the three of us. One bread. One bread and bread a few inches. Well. I don't want people to think I'm just six foot. I'm, <laughs> I'm actually a little bit taller than that. So one bread and a finger, right? This program is a production of WGTE Public Media in collaboration with our sponsor, the Toledo Symphony, with generous support from the Rita Barber Kern Foundation. You can download episodes of this show as a podcast by going to our website at wgte.org slash lab. You can also subscribe to us through your podcast app of choice, including Apple and Google Podcasts. My thanks to everyone who joined us today. I'm Brad Cresswell. You've been listening to Toledo Symphony Lab from FM 91.